baby chicken mama dingo Oh no, here we go, I freak out though, I'm low Dick so big, check my jig, cut this ghost on my pole Walking with this swagger, with these moves like Jagger Got these chicks on the stagger as I roll with my dagger an extremely popular English YouTuber, a professional boxer, an actor, and a music artist. He was born on June 19th, 1993 in Watford, United Kingdom, recently making him 27 years old. And he is often referred to by the three-letter acronym CSG, standing for Comedy Shorts Game. Wait, oh sorry, that's the wrong brother. What I meant to say was Baba Tunde. Wait, wrong person again? Sorry, what I meant to say was KSI ULAJIDEBT or KSI standing for knowledge, strength and integrity KSI has knowledge tattooed on his tits and has strength and integrity tattooed on his forearms His name originates from a Halo clan So basically, we'll start off with KSI Now, KSI in actual fact is a clan uh, <laughs> a Halo clan actually Um. Back in the day when I was um, playing the Xbox, when I was, I think I was 15 or 14, um, yeah, I had this black guy come up to me like, Oi, you! Do you want to join our clan? Okay, yeah, sure, Mr. Scary Black Man. I mean, I'm... Olajide Williams Olatunji, or JJ, a popular nickname that has been given to him, has two YouTube channels and is a member of the British YouTube group called The Sidemen, where they partake in various challenges and activities in a comedic manner. Over his two channels, KSI has grown a staggering following of over 30 million subscribers and over 7 billion views altogether. Though even with all of this success, he still does not make it onto the current top 50 most subscribed YouTuber list of non accumulated of channels. JJ has and has had several different streams of income including YouTube, social media, tours, merchandise, music streams and sales, selling books, acting, and boxing. In this video, we will be following how this England raised personality started out on YouTube to his current lifestyles year by year. Many of JJ's fans don't know this, though JJ did actually have an old channel that is now abandoned. It was created on April 24th, 2008 and was named G Day Jr. The channel consisted of FIFA and homework rap videos, totaling 9 uploads. His first upload was on April 24th, 2008, called Looking Through Space. In full caps, which was on the same day the channel was created. In this video, he explained how radio telescopes work for a school project. I can't play much of each clip with the audio because literally every single video on his oldest channel has used copyrighted music in it. JJ's last video on the channel was named Physics Rap, which was uploaded on March 29, 2009. As you can probably guess, this video is about physics and it was likely an assignment for school. Though interestingly enough, he had FIFA gameplay as visuals for this video. These were one of his first raps available to the public and foreshadowed later growth in the music industry. KSI's main channel was created on the 24th of July in 2009. Currently, his oldest public video was uploaded on the 1st of February in 2010 and it was a 30 second long gameplay clip highlighting him killing another player in Modern Warfare 2 with a care package killstreak drop. About a month later, on the 2nd of March, JJ uploaded a Modern Warfare search and destroy rap video. Ironically enough, now, at the end of the video, he had thanked all of his 50 subscribers. Ah, back then he didn't know how popular he would become. No one did. So this is it. Free B1, I yeah. ain't scared. Ha, I'm the one with the gun. To yeah. me, this was fun. Wasn't getting not done. Checking uh -huh. my corners right to left as I get the bomb. Cause I am the bomb. Yeah. You don't wanna ignite me. Cause I'll blow up in your face with my silence P19. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 ain't over, ain't over, ain't over, yeah. Many of his fans still say that this is one of his best tracks to date, and I couldn't agree more. JJ continued making joke and satirical songs on his channel throughout the years, such as I'm on a horse and Hesky time. And that was it for 2010. Yep, a plentiful two uploads, totaling a massive 2 minutes and 36 seconds of content for the year. Now, on to 2011. KSI picked up his upload schedule with FIFA games and ditched more Warfare. He uploaded his first video of 2011 on February 9th and his last video of 2011 
on December 30th. He uploaded a total of 209 videos in 2011, just on his main channel. These videos mainly consisted of different FIFA series, including FIFA Talks, FIFA Funnies, FIFA Top 5 Goals of the Week, and FIFA Road to Division 1 videos. Further down KSI's YouTube career, once KSI was starting to generate enough revenue from YouTube, he started uploading FIFA pack openings as well. If you don't know what FIFA packs are, just imagine a Black Ops Zombies mystery box. With the 950 points you pay to open the box is real life money, and the random guns you get are random players that you can play with and manage in your team inside of virtual soccer matches. Bruh. He also uploaded vlogs, goofs, and sometimes videos that were unrelated to FIFA. It was very rare for any of his videos to reach the 10 minute mark. He had reached 50,000 subscribers around October of 2011, and it didn't seem like his dedication would stop anytime soon. I haven't even mentioned his second channel yet, which was created on January 26, 2011. It was recently renamed to JJ Olatunji from KSI Olajidebt HD V2, and on this channel, JJ would, you know what? Let me let the star of the show explain it himself. Basically, this channel is for me to be free, because I know my first, or my main channel, it's just FIFA, 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 and more FIFA. But I want to have a channel where I'll be able to be a bit more free, be able to do more things, be able to try out different games. Because I don't want to be a one-trick pony and be like, oh, you can only be funny at FIFA. I want to be that guy who can do more than just FIFA. He uploaded seven times on this channel in 2011. The first upload being on the 31st of August and the last being on the 1st of November. He uploaded commentaries, highlights, and playthroughs of different games including Call of Duty Black Ops 1, Battlefield 3, and Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi. 2011 was an eventful year for KSI, and a very progressful one to say the least. On December 23rd of 2011, KSI uploaded Hesky Time, a song by Randolph featuring KSI. Yep, that is the same Randolph you know today that has collabed with KSI on much more recent music. You will hear more about this English YouTuber and rapper later on in this video. KSI had reached 50,000 subscribers by October 2011 and had reached a whopping 1 million subscribers just 3 years after starting his journey on YouTube. He reached 1 million subscribers in very late 2012 where he was almost at the point of not reaching the milestone until after New Year's. In 2012, he uploaded different videos ranging from FIFA on his main channel to any game that interested him on his second channel. Also in 2012, he started a very popular series of his called Q&A Sunday on his main channel where he would read questions towards him and his family from fans. In these videos, he was sometimes accompanied by a family member or a friend of his. At first, his parents weren't too supportive of dropping higher education for YouTube, though over time, his family grew more engaged and assistive to JJ's request as his following grew and his dedication towards this career path grew. Kesai's parents consist of Yinka and Jide Olatunji. Both of Nigerian descent. Both these lovely parents have grown extremely supportive of their sons, Deji's, and KSI's separate YouTube channels, and have appeared in their sons' videos on plenty of occasions. Though he did have somewhat of a controversial upbringing in which he was criticized for his rape face joke that he sometimes pulled in his videos in 2012 and 2013. This joke consisted of KSI attempting to create comedic effect or jokingly threaten viewers into adding to his social media following. This joke would not last on YouTube today, and the media would likely crucify Kisai's image if he were to pull such a stunt in present day media. This controversy followed him when he was accused of verbally and sexually harassing staff and attendees at Eurogamer 2012. Microsoft then cut all ties with KSI and he was banned from all future Eurogamer events. He followed up with an apology and tried redirecting attention away from the incident. Specifically, JJ apologized for any offense the video of 15 months ago may have caused in the short time it was on his YouTube channel. Around this time, and in 2013, Gujan Daniel had used KSI to grow his own channel, whereas KSI was led to believe their relationship was more based on friendship rather than monetary gain. There were complications with Gujan Daniel utilizing KSI for videos to get views and money, as well as complications regarding Gujan Daniel not paying JJ back. After all of this, Gujan Daniel decided not to acknowledge the immense aid KSI had really given him at all when asked in interviews. Hey, this like whole that. Day, you didn't play that many YouTubers prior to that. Okay, you fine, play, fine. You played KSI, Who? right? 
Is that okay? Uh, oh, 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 okay, oh. and um, don't go there. Major, no, uh, Brotishaw. This led to beef, though Gujon Daniel had eventually apologized and the two parted ways. In early 2018, they were reunited once with KSI being forgiving. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> In 2013, KSI would upload any video game he found enjoyable and that interested him on his second channel while sometimes featuring his brother in his videos. He would upload anything ranging from horror games to short skits to bloopers to games like Surgeon Simulator, Happy Wheels, Cat Mario, indie games, and more. On his main channel, JJ stuck to FIFA, skits, vlogs, music videos, and public interviews. By the end of 2013, KSI was uploading mainly GTA Online content with members of the Sidemen on his second channel. Who are the Sidemen, you may ask? In October of 2013, a group of British YouTubers were formed, now called the Sidemen, though were previously known as the Ultimate Sidemen. The group started off consisting of 5 members, though eventually grew to 7 members by early 2014, with the additions of Vicstar123 and Rotoshaw. In 2005, Simon and JJ had become friends at the age of 12 to 13. They eventually began creating videos and sometimes aided each other in one another's videos. Simon and JJ ended up connecting with Zerka in 2012, who was already close pals with Bob Jizzle from secondary school. From there on, the four had become closer and were watching Bazinga stream one day all together in a voice call. Bazinga was then invited to the group before the ultimate Simon were official. After the group was official, Wixstar123 was later invited in 2013. Lastly, Rotoshaw was invited in early 2014, concluding the group's recruitment to date. In present day, the group consists of seven members, their names being Josh Bradley or Zerker HD, Vikram Barn or Vikstar123, Toby Brown or Tobjizzle, Simon Minter or Mini Minter, Harry Lewis, which also goes by W2S or Rotoshaw, Ethan Payne or Bazinga, and last but not least, Oled. Jide Williams, Olatunji, or KSI. Currently, the group amasses a grand total of over 100.7 million subscribers altogether. On March 6 of 2013, KSI uploaded the official music video to the song Joydeka Get Hyper. It was a compilation of JJ and the others getting hyper, which comprised of them spazzing out in an enthusiastic manner. By the end of 2013, KSI had surpassed 3 million subscribers, which made him the 25th most subscribed YouTuber at the time. In 2014, KSI once again uploaded a large variety of different games on his channel, though he started off the year with lots of GTA Online funny moments. On his main channel, he continued with vlogs, skits, FIFA videos, public interviews, pranks, and animations here and there. This year was very remarkable for KSI and full of great videos and progression for his channel. In 2015, KSI started to take his career as a music artist more seriously. He released his debut single, Lamborghini, which featured P-Money and landed on number 30 in the UK singles chart. This song was written about his recently purchased Lamborghini Aventador and was published on March 23rd, 2015. JJ continued expanding his collection of content and released a biography book released on September 24th of 2015 titled ASI I Am A Bellin which he toured to promote. Another book of KSI's would be I Am A Tool, How To Be A YouTube Kingpin and Dominate The Internet which was released on September 29th 2015. These two book releases have very little difference in content though just with those few changes being to better relate to different geographic regions of release. JJ reached the huge milestone of 10 million subscribers in August of 2015 and later received his 10 million subscriber diamond play button in June of 2016. JJ continued uploading random games he found intriguing on his second channel, which included, but it isn't limited to, GTA 5, Monopoly, The Order 1886, Mortal Kombat X, and Until Dawn. On KSI's main channel, as you can guess, he continued uploading FIFA, skits, challenge videos, and sometimes animations. From my findings, it seems like KSI dropped a ton of bangers in 2015. In 2016, KSI continued uploading reaction videos, challenges, vlogs, public interviews, and some FIFA. On his second channel, he carried on producing mainly gaming videos. Shortly after New Year's, he released his debut EP, Keep Up, on January 8, 2016, which peaked at number one on the UK R&B albums chart. Ever since, he has toured and continued to release music. JJ released his second EP, titled Jump Around, on July 29, 2016. KSI and the Sidemen group that he was a part of published a book titled Sidemen, the book, on October 18, 2016, which 
sold 26,436 copies in three days. This book was responsible for at least hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue. JJ continued his YouTube career by uploading skits, reactions, interviews, try not to laugh videos, and FIFA videos on his beloved main channel. Though he began uploading FIFA noticeably less and less from this point on, the game that grew his channel and audience from the start was now slowly starting to be left in the dust by KSI. He also worked with Endemol Games to create a mobile game which was titled KSI Unleashed. It was published on April 13th, 2016 and doesn't look like it held up too well. Oh yeah baby! Uh -huh. The same year, the first movie case I had been a major part of was released on September 26, 2016. This comedy film was titled Late in America and starred your boy, the British KSI Ola Jidabiti, and another YouTuber that is South African named Casper Lee. In 2017, the year started normally with consistent uploads from JJ. Though, on February 21st, 2017, he uploaded a video titled I Found a Hazard, where he played a 4v4 game of FIFA 17 with Simon and some of the members of Chelsea FC. After the upload, he went ghost on both his main and second channel, while temporarily privating almost 1,000 videos during this period. His next upload was on his main channel four months later titled It's Been a While, where he gave his audience some explanation as to why he was gone and gave a very short five second sneak peek of an upcoming video. This explanation and sneak peek video was uploaded on June 23rd, 2017 with comments disabled. He explained his departure with acknowledgement learning, and self-improvement in mind. JJ left to take a break from YouTube, try other things in life, and become a better human being. When he returned, he was very glad he did so, as the experience was a great refresher. The sneak peek was towards a music video that dropped on June 27th, 2017, titled Creature. This music video displayed KSI's metaphorical acceptance, breaking out, and progression from a past mental state of feeling held back. JJ released his third EP, Space, on June 30th, 2017, and his fourth EP, Distractions, on September 29, 2017. JJ said that this would be his final release via Island Records and that future music would be released independently. Island Records' parent organization is Universal Music Group or UMG when abbreviated. Island Record has or has had artists such as Justin Bieber, Scarlord, Bob Marley, Demi Lovato, Shawn Mendes, Jennifer Lopez, Katy Perry, Donald Glover, Iggy Azalea, and more. On the 4th of August 2017, Kesai tweeted he would be leaving the Sideman group he was a part of for years, and addressed this in a video on the 6th of August named I'm leaving the Sideman two days after the initial tweet. His decision was due to complications with one of the group members named Ethan Payne or by his internet alias Zynga. Due to this, a ton of diss tracks were released between the Sideman and JJ. This ended with Kesai admitting that some of the drama between him and the Sideman were fabricated, though portions of the beef were true. But don't worry, shortly after, his stance with the group was clear and he did not plan to leave anytime soon after that. Again, he is back to currently being a distinctive member of the group, the Sidemen. JJ didn't upload anything on his second channel for the rest of the year, though he started uploading once again on his main channel. Precisely, KSI didn't upload anything on his second channel from February 24th, 2017 to December 31st, 2018. Fun fact, August 2017 was the month he got the knowledge, strength, and integrity tattoos across his tits and arms. He released several music videos and diss tracks in 2017, as well as a bunch of vlogs, skits, reaction videos, and challenges. He also released information regarding press conferences towards his amateur boxing fight event with another YouTuber named Joe Weller. During this year, Net Nobody and KSI had some beef where they passed some diss tracks around. If you don't know who Net Nobody is, he was Sky Does Minecraft or Sky the KRS, with his channel now named Sky Does Everything. He posts Minecraft videos and he was in his prime years back. The first diss track was released by Net Nobody on August 28th, 2017, titled Diss Track ED. Then KSI responded with Adam's Apple on September 8th, concluding with Bend the Knee by Net Nobody, uploaded on September 8th as well. Net Nobody disclosed the only reason he indulged in the drama was to get his son back due to his ex not allowing him to visit his child due to varied reasons. In 2018, KSI continued with his regular updates and uploads, though with a mix of boxing information, boxing videos, and controversy. Three days before his upcoming boxing match with Joe Weller, JJ released Uncontrollable, featuring Big Zoo on January 31st, 2018, and played this during his ring walk at the fight. The amateur boxing event with Joe Weller took place on the 3rd of February, 2018, and ended with JJ being victorious.
this. The video drew 1.6 million live viewers and 21 million views within a day across both their channels. Case I actually uploaded a video on April 4th of 2018 named My First Adult Movie featuring Celestia Vega, where he had told his audience he would release the video of the actual adult movie if this teaser were to reach 1 million likes. I believe he had said this jokingly and in disbelief that he would ever reach this goal as 1 million likes later he has not released the adult movie and I don't believe he is planning to anytime soon. While he was still regularly uploading and updating his fans, KSI, an American YouTuber named Logan Paul and their management teams had scheduled an amateur boxing match for the two for the date of August 25th, 2018. Eight days before the fight, KSI dropped a diss track on Logan Paul titled On Point which he played during his ring walk for the fight. KSI's brother Deji was versing Logan Paul's brother in the ring, Jake Paul, the same day who is another big YouTuber. With the major hype, press conference releases, and Country Pride, one of the largest events in YouTube history would go down. The fight had sold out 21,000 tickets for Manchester Arena and had generated an estimated 2.7 million pounds of revenue when looking at money made from tickets and pay-per-view earnings. The boxing match had been viewed live by 1.2 million illegally via streams on the popular streaming platform Twitch and 1.05 million viewed through pay-per-view, totaling a whopping 2.25 million live viewers during the fight. KSI and Logan Paul had tied their match against each other and Deji had lost to Jake Paul that day. From there on, KSI and Logan Paul had rescheduled another boxing fight to finish their duel off with a distinct winner. KSI had worked with another game company to publish another mobile game titled BoxTuber. In this game, we learned that Mini Minter is a better professional boxer than KSI. <laughs> As of now, both games KSI has released have been discontinued and I can no longer find either on the Google Play Store. KSI had a documentary released about him on August 10, 2018 that was an hour and 10 minutes long titled KSI Can't Lose. It showcased the determination he put into training and his preparations towards overcoming the odds against beating Joe Weller in the fight that took place in February. KSI Can't Lose Extended Cut was published and publicized the next year on October 29, 2019. On the 4th of November 2019, KSI signed with RBC Records. RBC Records' parent company is BMG Rights Management. RBC Records has or has had artists such as Gucci Mane and Chief Keef. Between JJ's departure from Island Records and signing to another record label, JJ was releasing music independently. Dax and Kodeka were called out by JJ for being worse than him at rapping. Dax dissed KSI in small doses in his kill shot freestyle and Kodeka made a full-on diss track titled Insecure published on November 23rd, 2018. Some of the information regarding the disses about KSI in Insecure, which were supposed to remain private, were given to Kodeka by KSI's brother, Deji. JJ decided to not make a diss track on Deji and resolve such family matters privately as things often get blown out of proportion in the public eye. KSI replied to Insecure on December 4th, 2018 with a diss track aimed at Kodeka titled Aries. Also in 2018, beef sprung about between one of JJ's close friends, Randolph and JJ's brother, Deji. It later on involved JJ, as JJ supposedly took Randolph's side instead of his brother's. Anyways, KSI eventually blocked Deji on Twitter and tweeted, get rid of negative delusional people, even if they are family. Although, this tweet was shortly deleted afterwards. Deji called out his brother for nepotism towards friends rather than family and for KSI's god complex. KSI shortly tweeted and uploaded a video about his love for his brother and apologies though they were retracted and deleted as Deji dropped a diss track titled Unforgivable on December 6, 2018 with three other features all dissing KSI. Then, Deji went on to Logan Paul's podcast which is the person that KSI had fought in a boxing match with that ended in a draw. As previously mentioned before, this fight occurred in August of 2018. KSI had advised Deji against it and did not give Deji permission to go on Logan Paul's podcast though Deji went on there anyways and talked about the beef he had with his brother. On Christmas Day, KSI came to visit the family. Due to complications, drama, and disputes, JJ was kicked out of the house.
mostly about JJ and Deji. On January 6, 2019, Deji uploaded an apology video, quote unquote, deleted the unforgivable diss track, and the beef seemingly ended. Soon, Kodaka and JJ killed their beef as well over a game of FIFA in early 2019, and Kodaka eventually worked on one song with KSI on KSI's debut album, New Age. KSI's beef with Dax continued into early 2019, with Dax seemingly wanting to spar JJ. JJ would have to treat Dax with luxury and pay first class travel, hospitality, and more if he wanted Dax to come spar with him. After full commitment from KSI, though back and forth from Dax, Dax ultimately backed out of the spar session and claimed he was only using JJ for clout. To many of JJ's fans, Dax is known as a clown and as a joke. In 2019, KSI had been uploading less and less on his main channel during the days leading up his rematch against Logan Paul. A comedic beef was started in late January 2019, where a Fortnite trolling YouTuber had released an abomination of a song titled Oh Yeah Yeah. Instead of explaining the premise of the song, I will let you experience the horror for yourself. I'm truly sorry for this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in the little committee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're in the shitty committee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in the witty committee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're in the titty committee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in the bitty good bitty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I slapped your mama. Oh yeah, yeah. She voted for Obama. Oh yeah, yeah, you have a pet llama. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The song went viral and Max's fans were spamming oh yeah, yeah on the comment sections of all YouTube channels. JJ was one of the channels targeted and it was ruining his comment section. To combat this, KSI decided to accept Max's demands of changing his profile picture to one that Max requested, which would be one similar to Max's own. The only difference between KSI's profile picture and Max and his army of fans' profile pictures would be the inclusion of KSI's iconic black bandana. This was only temporary as the meme died down after a few months. It is important to note that KSI did release his debut album in 2019 titled New Age. The exact date of its release was April 12, 2019. New Age was a collaborative studio album by both British YouTubers KSI and his close friend at the time Randolph. The beef between the two brothers was once again unfortunately rekindled on the 2nd of May 2019. Due to the beef being resuscitated, Deji had made the unforgivable diss track public on his channel once once more. On May 25th, 2019, Deji released a 45 minute video to clear his name of being the bad guy. He talked about all the things that he dislikes about his brother and discusses how it has taken a significant mental toll on him. On June 3rd, 2019, KSI released a video titled Ending It All, which may seem like he's committing suicide, but he isn't. Calm down. The title is in reference and a response to the beef or verbal fights he had with his brother over the past several months. While the beef predominantly took place after late 2018, Deji addressed several issues with events that occurred several years back. Deji wanted to find resolve in the problems he saw with KSI over the years and the way the public received himself. JJ wanted to end the beef and after attempting to keep it all private, he decided to make a full response video to Deji because it seemed like this drama would stay in the public eye either way as Deji made efforts to make private information public and constantly respond publicly rather than privately for his own reasons. KSI responded to any claims Deji makes with rebuttal, proof, or apology. KSI just wanted to end all of the beef between them so that him and his brother could be buddies again. The next day after ending it all was published, Deji claimed that the beef was over and that things would be kept private thereafter. Despite this, Deji decided to upload another video on the 18th of June 2019 where he discussed his mental suffering and that he would like people to stop seeing him as the bad guy. Thankfully, the next day on stream, he had told his viewers that him and JJ would take therapy together. After all of this back and forth, the beef finally died down over time and the two brothers seemingly are once again buddies. I genuinely despise that such family matters went public as things could have been sorted in a much more efficient manner if things were kept private. Anyways, enough of all that negative boring talk. The boxing rematch, labeled KSI vs Logan Paul 2, was rescheduled to be on November 9, 2019 and both of them needed all the mental and physical training they could get to one-up each other. This time the boxing match was professional and neither contesters wore headgear. KSI was trained by Vidal Riley and Jeff Mayweather who are all experienced professional boxers. KSI, knowledge, truth, integrity. 
celebrity. Huh? Boy, if you don't. JJ had played another one of his songs for his ring walk, this time being down like that, with the features of his song being Rick Ross, SX, and Little Baby, being there physically in the ring to perform the song. This song was released two days before the fight. The boxing match came to a very close score between the two, though KSI is the one that came out with the victory. After the fight and the fat checks deposited to both JJ's and Logan Paul's bank accounts, KSI had given his main channel a new approach in which he would only be uploading the highest quality of content he could. Since then and currently, KSI has primarily reserved his main channel for anything that concerns him and his music career. This includes music videos, music video trailers, music video behind the scenes, music remixes, and lyric videos for his music. With this in mind, he gave his second channel the approach of uploading anything that interests him whenever, which is very similar to the approach he had towards his second channel years ago. This brings us to 2020, 12 years since his first YouTube channel and a decade since his first upload on his main channel. As I said before, his main channel is primarily reserved for anything related to him and music videos. Currently, his last upload was 6 days ago and it is a remix of one of his recent songs, Houdini, which features Swarms and Tion Wayne. On his second channel, he is attempting to upload daily and says he is really enjoying YouTube at the moment because of the free flowing content he is making as of now. On his second channel, he is mostly making reaction based videos and sometimes gaming videos. By now, it is very rare for KSI to upload any FIFA videos. One of his fan favorite videos are KSI's reddit videos in which he takes a look at his own reddit r slash KSI. Usually when a YouTuber has a subreddit, fans post and laugh with the YouTuber, though JJ's fan base is just on a whole nother level of savagery. Most of the time, KSI's fan base just fucking annihilates him and disregards him of all of his achievements, pride, and dignity via bringing up forehead and hair jokes directed at him with extreme repetitiveness. Most subreddits that are about someone tend to cover news and discussions regarding topics surrounding that person while having its redditors laugh together with that someone the reddit is about. Though, Kesa just gets fucking minced on his reddit. From his fans joking about family issues to incest to simple jokes. Kesai's reddit laughs at him, not with him. JJ understands how to laugh at himself and accept himself, and he purchases himself in a way that shows no discomfort towards these rude messages and thoughts from fans. Though we all know you cry yourself to sleep every day because of the reddit videos, JJ. Nah, I'm just joking. He had spoken about this and told his fans it doesn't affect him at all in a previous video. Hopefully this is true. On May 22nd, 2020, KSI released his second album, Dissimulation. With this album, he had once again proved his potential versatility in music while displaying constant improvement in music over the years. This album clocked in over 100 million all-time streams within the first 24 hours of its release. Just this year, KSI has released multiple bangers that have topped some of his past music's performance on the UK singles chart, with his songs featuring multiple popular artists from the music industry. Examples of these Artists include Smoke Perp, Lil Pump, Swarms, and Trippy Red. It wasn't out of the ordinary for KSI to go on tour to promote his music, though he was unable to do such for the simulation because of the global pandemic COVID-19. I have a lot of respect for KSI because of what he has persevered through and achieved throughout the years. I've been watching him since I was a young lad, and it has been, and still is, a joyous experience watching him grow up as I grow up. JJ has always stood up for what he has done, whether it be success or failure. He would always own up to his mistakes and address his issues and I believe this is something that we should all attempt to carry out in our daily lives. It is transparent to see that KSI has been very successful and we shouldn't be ignorant to the fact that he has been relevant on YouTube almost every single year he has been active on it as that is a very difficult feat to accomplish. Undoubtedly, JJ has more money than the average Joe and this is evident in the extravagant purchases, confirmation of ownership of over 10 properties valued at a combined sum of over 10 million pounds and a net worth of roughly 20 million dollars estimated by wealthy gorilla he has donated to multiple charities over the years and has raised much awareness for several causes through charity work such as co-organizing and participating in sideman charity football match events anyways that's been it i understand that i did not cover everything though i strive to exclusively converse on topics and obstacles he overcame that are relevant to who he is today and that i found interest in. If I missed some small details or messed up on some of the info, please correct me in the comments below. This has been Jinx. Thanks for watching this video.
Fuck it up, my bitch, she better than she did it. 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 She better than she